Lyndon Arthur is back, ready to stake a claim for a shot at world glory when he takes on Argentina's Walter Gabriel Shekiera. Part of a huge night of action on Saturday, September the 17th. It's live and free on Channel 5. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by The Last. Back with a boy, the British champ, Too Sharp. How are you, my brother? I'm good, man. How are you, man? You've been missing. I've been about, I've been about. <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Um, just weighed in. Kind of, I don't know, a bit of a weird fight week. I mean, you can tell me this. Because of the jeopardy surrounding what happened with, obviously, Shields and Marshalls postponed last week, was there kind of a little bit in the back of your mind of, will I be fighting on Friday? Um, Have you had that this week? Only, only for that weekend. When that got cancelled, I felt like, geez, it, it might just run over to the funeral, for the Queen's funeral. But... Um, and it may, it could have went on, but I understand why, because it was right, you know, at the weekend of the Queen's death, so I understand why they postponed that. But when I, never, when I didn't hear nothing come Monday, pardon me, when I didn't hear nothing come Monday, oh, I'm even mad, sir. When I didn't hear nothing come Monday, I felt, okay, cool, but where, you know, it's, it's still on. So I wasn't really panicking, I just kept everything the same. Talk to me about life as British champ again. Um, one of the fights of the year with Lionel Adolfia, and then coming off the back of that, you get the good response from the fight and the fact that, of course, British champion again. Um, did life change back to how it was? Yeah, a lot less travelling. <laughs> but um, uh, a better, a good response for the fight. You know, people loved it. People still tell me up till today that like, that was one of the, um, you know, fights of the years and stuff. So I'm proud of that. Um, you know, it's good to be in at least one or two of those type of fights once, once in your career. <laughs> but um, no, it was a good fight. And like I said, I, I won my title back in a good fight. So it felt good. Everything's still calm. I'm sitting in the gym just grafting. So yeah, man, it's all good. Yeah, because I suppose you will remember the belts you win in your career, but when people look back through boxing, they remember fighters by the fights they were in. So we remember the wars, like, I don't know, Tim Bradley for the Provodnikov fight, etc. So if you want people to look back, I suppose, at your career and go, these are the fights we remember from Denzel Bentley. Yeah, no, 100%. You've got a lot of champions that people don't remember, do you know what I mean? Maybe they just weren't in an exciting, in exciting fights. And then you've got champions you remember for like maybe one or two of their fights and obviously their career over as a whole. So I want to be one of those, those, those fighters that I remember for my career as a whole. But, you know, if, if I don't, I, I want to be remembered for at least one or two facts. People say, hey, every time I watch that fight, I, I'm, I'm, on my, I'm on my feet, I'm, I'm out of my seat, I'm on my toes and that. So, yeah. Did you kind of, and this is something, because I wasn't at the fight and I haven't seen you for a while. I kind of sensed from watching interviews, you had a little bit of a chip on your shoulder to get that British title back as well. Kind of like there was an annoyed Denzel Bentley going into that. You needed to prove a point, perhaps not to everyone else, even to yourself, maybe. Yeah, no, most definitely, because it was a thing where I lost now and everyone thinks I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Like. Which is very boxing nowadays, isn't it? That seems to be the thing. Yeah, yeah 100%. And then it's like, if I don't win this, where do I go? Do you know what I'm saying? And I know Lance is a good fighter, but it's like, obviously I know his company won the purse biz and, and they were promoting him and pushing him like the next big star. But I ain't gonna lie, it kind of bugged me. Like, all right, cool, you don't have all the limelight. I'm coming at the fight, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not here to, I'm not here for the limelight. I've been there, done that. It didn't go my way. So I'm here to just play the back and play my part and come out with a win. So it was just more like, all right, cool. Everyone thinks, you know, I'm you know, not going to win this fight. Let's, let's just go out there and prove everyone wrong and prove myself right because I know what I can do. Was it always going to be a defence of the British title? Sometimes kind of, and I know how much a British title means to you as well, but some kind, sometimes fighters kind of use it as a little bit of a stepping stone in a way. Was it always going to be, look, let me defend my British title rather than just going, I won a British title, now I'm going to skip to X level? Yeah, I think, um, listen, it's, it's not easy to win the British title, so when you win it, you win it, but like, in some ways it's like an easy way to just kind of like, move on I think Dan Aziz said it in one of his interviews before his last fight like you've actually got to defend your title like it's my title I want to defend it whether you defend it once or three times doesn't really matter doesn't it? You, I feel like you just you should defend it so I, I want to defend it have a successful defence and then move on if I get the opportunity to win out right, then it is what it is but if something else comes up then it comes up but I want to be able to defend it successfully before I move on to anything yeah, and you're defending it against someone that the boxing public know, Marcus Morrison. Fought at a very high level a couple of times, come up short against some, some top fighters, Chris Eubank being one of them. Um, but someone who possesses different challenges to Linus, and someone who is a good fighter with a very good coach behind him as well. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%, and that's what makes sense. You know, he's got a name on him. Um, a lot of people, the boxing public know him well. He's only lost at, the high, at, at a high level, so I think he's a good opponent for myself, isn't it? So, so, you know, to see where I am, come, come through this. Successfully, I'm up there with the top names that obviously that would have beat him. So I think it's, I think it's a good name to, to, to you know to come back to after that Atlanta fight. 
I know you said you only want a couple of them sort of fights in your career. We would obviously love kind of another one of them fights. Um, I know obviously you didn't stop Linus, but we know how hard you can hit. Are you going to be going out there and sort of laying it on Marcus from early and showing him your power and showing him what you're about? Yeah, no, most definitely, most definitely. I do want to get my... Wait, you've never made a secret of saying that you want to go for people. You've never tried to be mysterious after. You've always just said, I'm in the ring, I'm going to go for you. No, 100%. I've always said that. I'm, I'm coming to stop him. Uh, I, I would like to stop him. I'd love to stop him. I'm going to try and stop him. And we'll see how it goes, isn't it? We've got to go the distance and we go the distance. But I'm going to, I am going to try and stop him, yeah. Yeah, my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. There's five blokes outside my front door. Can you come in? One hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned.